This video demonstrates the simulation of a random walk in Python. Random walks appear in many disciplines, including physics and finance. In the context of finance, theory suggests that uh, the current share price, Pt, can be written as the share price in the previous period, Pt minus 1, plus a random process which represents public information. We make a few assumptions regarding the random process epsilon t. The expected value is equal to zero and it has constant variance. In addition, past realizations are independent from current realizations. So these assumptions can be summarized um, as on the whiteboard. Hence, taking conditional expected values based on information available at time t minus 1 yields the following. So the expected value given the information at t minus 1 for pt is simply the previous share price, which is observed by definition plus a conditional expected value for the error term. But we know that the expected value in this case is equal to zero if you apply conditions, it doesn't change that. Um, so this simplifies to the previous share price. Observing the previous share price, pt minus one, tells you everything you need to know about future share prices. This basically means that share prices are fully revealing and this implies so-called information efficiency in a strong sense. So every information that is available at this point in time is already reflected in the share price observed. How can we simulate this in Python. Well, we have a starting point, our initial share price P0. After a short time period, say delta T, the price can go up or down with equal probability. We can imagine the up movement to be of a step size dx and the down movement of a step size minus dx. So it's symmetric. Let's just visualize that we start at P0, so this is our given initial share price, and then we can move up or we move down, both with equal probability, one half. If we move up, if we move down, things happen to our share price. An up movement increases the value by dx, a down movement decreases the value by dx, and then it continues into the next period. Again, the same probabilities apply, and we add dx or we subtract dx accordingly, depending on our movement. So if you move, of course, from here up there, it's a plus movement. If you move down, it's a minus movement. So in the end, if we look at the up movements, we moved by 2dx. In the middle case, where we increased and decreased or decreased and increased, our movement is basically nothing, zero. And in the down movement, we have minus 2dx. When we look at the probabilities, in this case, um, we just have to look at our path and our probabilities and just multiply them. And obviously two up movements have a probability of one divided by four. Two down movements have a probability of one divided by four as well. And the middle case of no movement can be reached in two ways. So its probability is one half. So if we continue this exercise and we keep drawing, a so-called binomial tree emerges. It is evident that the expected value is equal to the initial value. You also see that the process is spreading. There are no bounds in this case. It is quite easy now to work out the variance of this process and uh, to look at how the variance is changing over time. So in general, the variance of a random variable x is defined as the expected value of x minus um, the mean denoted mu to the power of 2. But in our case, the expected value is equal to 0, as we have seen, um, and the only randomness in our process is driven 
by this process of public information. So if you look at the variance of p at point in time 1, so we look at this from the start of the period, p0 is, is a constant, it's a given, so there is no variability coming from that. So the only variance term that matters is epsilon 1 in the first period. So that is our random process. And we already know that the expected value of this process um, is equal to zero. So fundamentally we are looking for an expected value of this realization epsilon 1 power of 2. We know there are only two outcomes. So either the outcome is delta x or minus delta x. Now if we put this to the power of 2, we get two cases. So one half, so that's our probability one half, we can move up and we would get dx power of 2. And one half we move down, so it's minus dx power of 2, which again gives a dx to the power of 2. So we end up with dx to the power of 2. Now, of course, we can continue our little exercise. So again, we start um, from zero and we look at now the variance of the share price in two periods time. Now, in this case, we already know what the possible outcomes are. So either it goes up, up, and we get two delta x. Probability of it is one divided by four. Or we get no movement, so we have um, a displacement of zero. Of course, the expected value is also zero, so this term drops from our variance equation. Or we move down twice, and we have a displacement of minus 2dx. And again, we have a probability of 1 divided by 4 for this to happen. So in the end, we um, obtain 1 divided by 4, 2dx power of 2 plus 1 divided by 4 minus 2dx power of 2. And obviously this simplifies 2 to dx power of 2. Now in general if we continue doing this exercise now for capital T periods where it is of course an integer, we would get T dx power of 2. So I start by importing our standard libraries. Well, we certainly need the random library because we have to do some random draws. NumPy is useful because we have to store our information and a NumPy array seems to be a very reasonable choice. Matplotlib.pyplot, well, this is for visualization. So the first thing I always tend to do is I um, just specify the parameters of my problems, which of course I can modify going forward. So here I just specify dx, so this is the change in value or the change in space in a more general sense. And then we have a probability for an up movement. So here we um, argue we have an equal probability, but of course you might like to modify this. Then we have a time step, I just put this equal to 1, and we have an initial value. Again, this is entirely arbitrary. So first I run now my so-called white noise process. So a white noise process has exactly the properties we want. So I start by specifying an all zero array, and then I um, go into um, a loop. I use an index here starting by default from 0 going up to n. And then I decide whether I have an up movement or a down movement. So I use the random library and I, I use random rand int, so for random integer. So this gives me a random draw between 0 and 1000. And then I divide by 1000. So this basically here gives me a probability from 0 to 1. It's up to you how many steps you like to have in between, but this seems to be quite reasonable. So if my random draw is above 50%, which is here my cutoff point for an up movement. It would um, move up, otherwise it moves down. And we know if we move up, we increase by dx. If we move down, we decrease by dx. So here I replace my numpy array entry point, depending on the position idx with the respective movement up or down. 
So again, I specify my NP0s N. So this is just starting out my price vector or array. I put as initial value, so index position zero, P zero, so that's my initial value. And then I literally write out the equation. Note I changed the range starting from one because I already specified the initial position. And I also need the initial position obviously here to refer to this um, in my equation. So the current value is the previous value plus the realization I obtain from my random process. And then I finally plot and I show the output. And as you can see, we now have a lovely random walk starting at 10 and then bouncing about. So that's pretty good. So now you know how to simulate a random walk in Python. I see you in the next one.